So I got a phone call a couple of days ago from a friend of mine, and uh, he has been in the process of trying to evangelize somebody, uh, someone whom he met and, and had a, a, a wonderful opportunity to get to know. And this, the person is very old, uh, you know, getting close to death. Health is not good, and they're with, they have no faith. And the, the, my friend, his name is Matt, he was trying very hard to get this man to accept the gift of faith. And he was struggling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Matt comes to the conclusion, I'm just not a very good evangelist. You know, I just can't do it. And I don't know if that was true or not. But one of the gentleman's chief complaints was the amount of evil in the world. The, the idea of this all-powerful God and all of this evil in the world. If you listen carefully to the reading from the prophet Habakkuk in the first reading today, what was Habakkuk complaining about? If you listen carefully, and it's kind of hard to pick up on those prophets sometimes, but he was complaining about the amount of evil in the world is what he was complaining about. And there's no question, I said not long ago, there's no question, there's no struggle that anybody has ever been through as far as on their faith journey that someone hasn't already gone through ahead of them, including right in the sacred scriptures. Habakkuk and Job are the strongest or the, or the most clear examples of the prophetic word of God speaking about the human struggle with the reality of evil. Habakkuk's kind of saying, uh, are you not from eternity, O Lord, my God, immortal? And then he goes, he's, he, so he kind of expresses God's immortality. And then he talks about the fact that we have all of these idolaters and they're worshiping their net and they're worshiping their saying, they're basically worshiping their money. And he's saying, how can you stand to look upon this? And there's also persecution that's happening. So the question of evil is one that we all have to ask. It's one we all have to wrestle with. And this guy's second complaint was that he had read the Bible, or so he reported that he had read the Bible, that he had read the gospels and that he found it all very impressive but that he hadn't met anybody that lived up to the gospel. And who do we celebrate today? What do we, what do we, today is a, a feast day of who? St. Dominic, right? And why do you think that we hold up the lives of the saints? Because they're examples to us of people who what? Who do live the gospel even if they had a time in their lives where they weren't necessarily filled with holiness. It makes, them, it makes them beautiful examples to us of that path to holiness. Jesus himself, I think is frustrated sometimes by our lack of holiness. Did you pick that up in the gospel? Okay. I, uh, you know, and, and, and sometimes I like to say, and I do say this with a smile on my face, you know, Jesus, Jesus went around stepping on people's toes, you know? I mean, he was not afraid to step on people's toes. He was not afraid to insult people. Even his disciples, you wonder why they kept hanging around with him, you know? Because what did he say to them today? He says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, you unbelieving perverts. That's what he said to them, you know. O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long must I be with you? How long must I endure you? And so Jesus himself 
recognizes our state and the state of the world. And as I like to say, and I wish that you would hear and remember that it would sink deeply into your soul. Jesus didn't come to condemn us for being a faithless and perverse generation. He came to save us. Is that permission to be faithless and perverse? Absolutely not. Ab in fact, absolutely, absolutely not. It is permission to recognize our condition when we are not as holy as we need to be and be called out of that into sanctity, into holiness, that we could be a living, walking, breathing example to an unbelieving world. Is that your goal? To be a saint? To be an example of holiness? If it's not your goal, I want you to make it your goal today. That you would be like St. Dominic, like St. Francis, like St. Ignatius of Loyola, like St. Rose de Lima, like St. Augustine, that we would go from faithless and perverse to faith-filled. So my brothers and sisters, we have a beautiful example today in the life of St. Dominic. Dominic who, whose heart was broken by the heresy in the world, the division of the church, the conflicts. And did he wring his hands and complain? No, he got to know the Bible and he went out and he proclaimed the gospel boldly and clearly in word and deed and brought a great conversion to the world around him. So back to my friend who is trying to evangelize this old man who claims to have never met anybody who's living the Christian faith. Let's pray that maybe uh, you and I can live the Christian faith for the people that God puts into our lives to evangelize and teach.